Welcome to Old Classic Car, and in this video compilation, we are looking at classic cars in black. Yes, classic cars, all of them black. And to begin with, we have HVX 151. That is a super rare Ford Prefect E93A drop head coupe, no less. What a rare little car that is. And you can see Ford Pop 103E alongside it. But yeah, that Prefect is such a rare little car. I don't think I've ever seen one of these before. Next up, an evening classic car meeting, and we have XEV498X, rare, rare Renault 18 Turbo, no less. When did you last see one of those, with those very distinctive alloy wheels as well? What a rare black car that is. Next up in this collection of black cars, we're over to a car show in North Wales, back in about 2006 or 7. A side-on view of a just post-war Austin 16. It looks very much a pre-war car um, and there are a few parts that do date to the pre-war years but this is very much a late 1940s vehicle, the Austin 16. Another lovely little Ford, a proper barn find if I've ever seen one. This WSK 470 is a Ford Anglia E04A. What a dusty little gem that is and again painted black from new as so many of these little Fords were. Now to a wonderful evening there, lovely skies as well, OAS 724, that's a just post-war again, Jaguar 3.5 litre saloon, this wonderful Jaguar dates to 1947, what a cracker that is as well, I'm assuming that's an age-related registration number, maybe it's lost its number at some point. Now BMW, a BMW 501, this was spotted at one of the Goodwood meetings many years ago, these were built from 1952. 1958 this left-hand drive car I think is part of BMW's own collection and they had several cars at the I think it was the revival meeting a few years back to another meet here this is one of the Combermere meets that we go to and we've got a black Porsche 928 wonderful V8 powered car there really really nice GT I do like those a lot that's quite a late example of the breed Now down to Prescott, one of the VSCC, the Vintage Sports Car Club meets, and here in black is the very famous ERA racing car R4D, ERA, English Racing Automobiles. You can see the boss's name, Raymond Mays, just on the side of the car there below the mirror. FPX 345C, we saw this one at Goresworth Hall, I hope you've seen the video by now that we did a walk around video at Goresworth, this is a Fintail Mercedes, a Mercedes Benz 220 no less, what a cracking looking car, that is a bit of a Bond villain vibe about that one, but great quality car there. This was at an evening pub meet a little while ago, 435 DTU on its original registration, a two door Austin A35 glistening in black there. What a fantastic paint finish on that particular car. That's a really, really nice machine. Now, MSS 1E, this was a few years ago. Uh, it's not an XJ Jaguar, this is the Daimler, the Daimler double six no less, the V12 powered car in series two form. You can just see the small V12 badge on the top of the Daimler grille there. What an interesting car that is. I've not seen this one for a while, so I wonder where it is now. Now to MG's AFL 107. That is a black MGYA of 1950. Continuing this look at classic British cars all in black, we have this one here and a mighty Cadillac on an F registration. This was somewhere in Wales quite a few years ago, I just happened to spot it at the side of the road, so I thought I'll, I'll grab a quick photograph of this one. If you know where it is now, or indeed the story of any of the cars featured here, uh, please let me know in the comments. But yeah, what, a, what an eye-catching machine that is. Somewhat smaller, but also in black, is this fantastic little Morris 8 Series 2 saloon. Bonnet raised there, there's a little Morris branded oil can attached to the bulkhead there, that's very, very nice. That's a very tidy car indeed, and they only made the Series 2 for a couple of years or so, and it was replaced by a very different looking Series E. Now over to Alton Park on one of their race days, and we've got a 1965 MGB Roadster uh, with a very smart Mercedes-Benz tow car up front as well. But yep, the MGB is black, and that is the subject of this particular video. 
Okay, next up, ooh, this is rare. This is a Split Window Series 2 Morris Minor Traveller. You might think, oh, just another Morris Minor Traveller, but the Series 2 with a Split Window, that is quite a rare car indeed. On the reissued registration, PSV 258. That's it. in beautiful condition. Look at the woodwork on there. Next up, a slice of Americana. We have 161 YUP. And that is a 1955 Mercury Montclair, no less. Two door car there, coupe, very low roof line, very sleek indeed, and you don't see too many Mercury's around. Plenty of Fords and Chevys, but not so many of those. Now to the pit lane at Silverstone on a bit of a preview day for the Silverstone Classic some years back. We have a Viper, the Dodge Viper, all V10 powered. What an incredible car that is. Next up to Bista Heritage for one of their scramble meetings in 2023. Again, there is a video for this meeting on the channel elsewhere, so please check that out. NJT 647 Ford Zodiac Mark II. Um, this one was registered in 1959 and it has Raymond May's part, engine conversion. You can just see an RM badge on the end of the grille. Back to American cars just for a moment. We have a 1938 machine here. This is a lovely old Chevrolet two-door coupe. Or coupe. This was a Western Park, I believe this was photographed, but again, black all over with the red pinstriping there and on the wheels as well. Very, very nice. This was at a New Year's Day meeting, I believe this was. And in the foreground, a cracking little Austin 7 box saloon in black. TF3752, a gaggle of different colourful cars behind, but it's the Austin 7 in the foreground. Now we go down to the WEM Vehicles of Interest show, and this is an unusual vehicle dating to 1971. This is an all-black Winchester taxi. You don't see too many of those. I'm sure I've seen those rear light clusters somewhere before. Um, but yeah, the Winchester, that's a very unusual car indeed. Is it still in the area, I wonder? Now this is a bit of an oddball, black over grey, but it's mostly black. An AMC Pacer. These were built from 1975 to 1980. Quite an oddball design for the American car market. So different to anything else that had come before. Even had different length doors on either side. What an unusual car that is. Very strange. Next up, another classic car show, and we have EBY 545. This is a Wolseley New 10 dating to 1939. That has a small four cylinder engine, 1140cc engine under its bonnet, sliding sunroof as well. Very smart little car indeed, related to Morris's of the era. Back to Alton Park briefly, and we are in the pit lane. Uh, RAS 227, that's a Jaguar XK140 fixed head coupe. That's a 1955 car, and stunning it is too. What a cracking looking car that is. Painted wires, chrome knock-ons, louvered bonnet with a leather strap, fantastic. You may recognise this scene if you watched the Western Park video early in 2023. There was a huge queue of cars pulling in, and amongst them was this black Triumph TR2 registered PSL 996. Okay, uh, another evening meet and appeared on a trailer this time. Uh, there was a side on view of a Ford Model A Coupe or Coupe A, the two door version, the fixed head two door version of the Ford Model A. Lovely car, side valve, four cylinder engine, 3.3 litres and a very popular choice in many VSCC events now. Okay, this was a few years ago, our late 1970s Triumph TR7 fixed head coupe, finished in black with gold pinstriping down the side. Of course all the TR7s for many years were the fixed heads and the convertibles only came along a lot later in production, but most of them are like that there. We're back to WEM, the Vehicles of Interest show, and alongside a Riley RM, we've got this great little Austin Healey Sprite Mark 1, unofficially called the Frog Eye, or in America, the Bug Eye. These are the BMC A-Series engine, based on that of the Austin A35, but slightly modified cam, twin carburetors and so on, just to make it a bit more sprightly. Now, Western Park again in 2023, we have a mighty Citroen Traction of all, 466 UXT. This is a big, big 15. Uh, rather than the more usually seen light 15s. This is quite a big car, very, very handsome too. Left-hand drive, original U uh, French manufacturer, I believe. Back to our one of the local meetings that we go to and this wonderful Austin Healey 3000. This is on the C registration, 1965. It's a late-ish example with the wind-up windows, uh, 
but yeah, what a sharp looking car that is. Black with the chrome, it really sets off the chrome, that black paint finish. Over to Alton Park again, and we have a C1 Corvette here going around the circuit. Next up in this collection, oh, you might recognise this one if you've been around the channel for a while. This is our 1956 Standard 8 Saloon UWD 581. This was on a particular day where it failed to proceed en route to a classic car show. And we had to abandon it in a nearby farmer's yard and then pick it up later in the day with an A-frame. OK, P808 SUU, the good old London taxi. Uh, originally these were Austins. Uh, this is the car bodies taxi of 1997. I think they were called a fairway, weren't they, at one point? Back to another local meeting and a pair of minis there and in the foreground one of the reissued, the later versions if you like, of the Mini Cooper. Tuned up version of the Mini, this one from the 1980s or very early 1990s, I'm not quite sure. I think it's probably late 80s this one. Bit of American motoring history here, AAX 179. This one dates to October 1934, that's when it was registered. 4.4 litre V8 engine, four doors. Very, very smart looking car indeed. And you can see how they came up with the design of a little Ford Model Y, so similar to these bigger American cars. A beautiful Vauxhall now, a Vauxhall Velox, the E Series Vauxhall Velox. What a cracking looking car that is. Black really showing off the chrome to a, you know, to a T. Look at those chrome strakes on the bonnet as well, and that big mascot in the middle of the bonnet too. Next up, wow, talking of American cars here, we've got 910 UXT. This is a 1959 Chevrolet Impala. What an incredible looking car it is. I mean, fins out for everyone, and I'm not entirely sure about the finned era of the late 1950s, but there's no denying these are certainly eye-catching cars. Somewhat more subdued, and a little bit later, is this North Welsh registered Morris Oxford, one of the Farina Morris Oxfords. And now this one, I looked this one up and it shows as being no longer registered, sadly. So I wonder where this is. Has it been scrapped or broken for parts? I mean, this was a few years ago, but it didn't look in terrible condition. OK, down to Malvern, the classic car show down there. And registered 1922 FD is this fantastic Daimler Majestic with the, I think it's 3.8 litre engine in it. Um, but yeah, lovely, lovely car. OK, following on from the Daimler, we have this beautiful little Alfa Romeo. This was spotted in a Portuguese motor museum a few years ago. I think it's an Alfa Romeo Giulietta, I suspect. You can see the Super Leggera badge on the bonnet there, same as that as you see on the, the Aston Martin DB5 as it happens. But what a swish little car that is. And here are two rarities. Not often you see one Mini Clubman with the wood down the side, but two here, two black cars. These were spotted at the Smallwood Vintage Rally just a year or two back. And very, very rare pair of survivors. Note the proper Clubman uh, hubcaps on these particular cars. Nice and rare to see those. OK, down to a museum, we have BAD 899 is the registration of this. We mentioned the Ford Model Ys before, and here we have a two-door version of the pre-war Ford 8 of about 1933, 34, something like that. This is a long grad version of that particular car with a 933cc side valve engine. OK, to Porsche now, and we have a 911T of the early 1970s here, finished in black. As are all the cars in this collection, you can see a little 2.4 badge on the rear engine cover there. Really nice little car before Porsches went all fat. Down to Goodwood again, lovely little Morris Mini Cooper or Cooper S. This was taking, place, uh, taking part in one of the revival uh, race meetings. I think this was in 2021, if memory serves. I love the little Land Rover in the background as well. Little electric Land Rover breakdown vehicle, very neat indeed. Back down to Western Park, a few years back, SSC 555. That is a 1958 MG Magnet. These have the twin carb B series engine, 1489cc, these particular cars, unless it's been upgraded. Often people put the MGB engine in that kind of thing. 
Right down to WEM, the vehicles of interest, BGP202. This particular Rolls-Royce dates, or was rather registered, in August of 1934. Very impressive looking pre-war Rolls-Royce saloon there. I like that a lot. Lovely interior, if I remember correctly as well. Talking of impressive cars, we have XBV107, an American LaSalle. This car dates to 1940, as you can see on the front number plate there, and originally came from Ohio in America. And as you can see, it's left-hand drive, of course, having hailed from the US, and has been imported to this country in more recent times. Now, if you watch bangers and cash regularly, you may well have spotted this particular Austin Westminster, the Austin 6 Westminster. This one went through their sale a little while ago, and here we saw it on, I think this was the, the Tour of Cheshire, or Rally of the Tests, I don't quite remember which one. This was down near Ellesmere in Shropshire, on a stage they had down there. Now, to Bista Scramble, this appeared at one of the 2023 Scramble meetings we went to. A very intriguing cut-down little Ford Escort made into a pickup truck. Very neat it was too, and finished in black, as you can see there. Very neat little car. Very, very tasty as well. Very, very different. We have a Jaguar D-Type, a long-nosed Jaguar D-Type. Clearly having a bit of work done to it, all the wheels off and up on stands. What a stunning car that is. to road cars we have AFL 606 this of course is a Rover P4 it's one of the Cyclops cars as they were called dates to 1951 this particular car uh, the center lamp in the middle of the grille there is the reason for the Cyclops nickname that's a lovely old car that is like that one very much indeed but look at this we're back to American cars and fins momentarily 58300D or OOD rather. This is a Chrysler 300D, a two door hardtop version. This was at one of the Crew Heritage Classic car meetings a little while ago. Very impressive, very imposing car. Somewhat more modest. This was at the Tatton Park Classic Car Show in June 2023. We've got a super original Wolseley 1500 here. Lovely original paint on it, polished through in places around the car as you walked around oh so original and really really all the better for it just a great old car as was this i spotted this one in a barn a few years back now it's been sat clearly for a little while humber imperial top of the range really above the super snipes and the hawks and that kind of thing humber imperial had like an everflex roof and adjustable rear dampers as well it's all controlled from the uh, on the dashboard now in 2019 we went down to the nec not the NEC, um, Gaydon rather, home of the British Motor Museum. And there's a big mini do on, and there's this Chilean registered Austin Cooper S. It came all the way over from Chile um, to join in the celebrations. Wow, what a great, what a sharp looking car that is. That's really, really cool. Now we have a Ford 100E Prefect. We see this one around at many shows. If you've watched any of the show walk around videos that I do, you'll have probably seen this one before. Really, really smart car. A few goodies for sale there as well, which is something we always like to see, of course. Looking a little bit sadder, though, is this very poorly looking Wolseley 12 Saloon. Clearly, this one had been off the road and left in the long grass for many, many a year. I wonder if anything got rescued off this one. I doubt it's back on the road, but maybe a few of the spares were saved. Who knows? Back to Western Park, PCF. 251, a very bonny Morris Minor 1000 of the late 1950s, still with a clap hand wipers. There's a bit of a nod back to the days when the Series 2 that came before still had the split windscreen, and that also had a clap hand type of windscreen wiper arrangement. Here's a beauty now, FXP 572, a Humber Super Snipe, a late pre war car. This is June 1939. This particular four litre power car was put on the road. I wonder what its story was during the Second World War. Was it requisitioned, I wonder, or was it just stashed away up on blocks somewhere? UCH 830 is a Lotus Elite. This was seen at one of the historic race meetings at Alton Park. A beautiful car, really, really great little race car. That is very nice indeed. Still plenty more black cars to come, and here we've got CNP 144H. H registration came out in August 69 and ran to July 1970. The big Mark IV Zodiac there. Very impressive car, very large car indeed. Uh, yeah, 
it's uh, quite a car to polish that one I'm sure. Back to Farina's where we had a Morris Oxford before, now we have the Austin A55 Cambridge Mark II. I think these were built from about 1959 to 61 only, these had the bigger fins compared to the later cars, still with a BMC B-Series engine and 1489cc in these earlier cars. Back to Alton Park, a regular haunt of ours, and a fantastic Plymouth Barracuda here, just seen exercising its uh, mighty mighty V8 engine. Great looking car that is. Next up, also American 889 XUV, a Thunderbird from 1956. This was at one of the car fest meetings at Alton Park again a few years ago now. I think this was about 2013, somewhere around about there, I would have thought. Some really interesting cars, including this all black T Bird. All black too, but from Vauxhall this time we have 818 UYO. That's an F type Vauxhall Victor. This one was put on the road in June of 1957. It currently shows as being sawn, i.e., statutory off road notification. Maybe it's off the road having a bit of work done to it. This was a few years back now. And this was a few years ago too. 5 HPD. What a swish motor car. This is a Ferrari 250 GT Pininfarina Coupe, no less. What a Bobby does of that is V12 powered and lovely, lovely car. Okay, in the same venue as the Ferrari, and we have this really, really sharp looking Porsche 911. I do like these cars with the whale tail and the wide rear arches. They do look fantastic, these late air cooled 911s. Not so keen on the later water cooled cars, and they just seem to get bigger and bigger, but that I still think looks really, really good. Now this, if ever the term oily rag applied to a car, this is it. This lives not too far from us here, and it's a beautiful pre-war Austin 6. Every year or so it gets a fresh coating of oil, and it is super original. The interior is just incredible, incredible looking car that is. It's been owned by the same owner for a long, long time. Right, we're over back to Tatton Park again, 2023. Check out the video because this car features in it. An Austin Cambridge, I'm not sure if it's the A40 or the A50. Um, because both cars are virtually identical to look at, I believe. But yeah, that's a very t nicely turned out car, and you don't see many of them. Now, we're over in Langothland for the Motor Museum, LYC 988. This is a Vauxhall Wyvern, one of the L-type Vauxhall Wyverns. This one was built in 1950, but it's been off the road since 1979, apparently. So, um, I tell them it got recommissioned, I suspect. Here's an unusual one, a Y plate, very, very late indeed. The Rover Maestro, originally Austin Maestro, of course. This was a super late car, very, very late registration, this particular one. I wonder if it's one of the cars that were built up after main, uh, the main Maestro production line had been closed down. I know some were built up later. Okay, back down to Vista Heritage, SLE 407. Another Citroen Traction of all. This is the Light 15 this time, and it is a right hand drive, slough built car in this case. We had the Big 15 before, which is a much larger car. And this is the Light 15. Ford Fiesta time now, Ford Fiesta XR2 Mark II. That's on an E registration, so that puts it at about 1987 or early 1988. Very sharp looking car, all the boy racers like those back in the day. Those pepper pot alley wheels and so on, and a spoiler on the back. Really, really cool little car. Now to Gorsworth Hall again, 2023, and this stunning uh, Invicta Black Prince. This was a wonderful car. I had a good close look at this one in the Gorsworth Hall video, so if you want to find out a bit more about this particular car, which has been in the area for quite a long time, I've seen this one on and off for years, please check out that particular video. Now, an MGC, the MGC GT with a big three litre straight six engine under that bonnet, hence the hump in the bonnet compared to a regular MGB. Uh, visually, it looks very similar to its four cylinder brother, but when you start looking at the details, especially when the bonnet's raised, or if you look under the front of the suspension, it's very, very different. JYV 751 now. This is a head on view of a standard 12 drop head coupe. You can see 12 just on the, the cover that's fitted to the uh, starter handle hole. Okay, next up we have this Lanchester AKV631. This is a Lanchester 12, a 12 horsepower car. 
This one was first registered back in September of 1935 and again, as with that Humber before, I wonder how this spent the war years. Was it just squirrelled away in someone's garage or was it requisitioned? Possibly used by the ARP, who knows? Right, back down to Malvern and we have a 1966 Humber Super Snipe. What an impressive car that is. Related, of course, to that Humber Imperial that I showed a little bit further, uh, a few months ago. Yeah, very impressive car. Lovely leather interior, wood dashboard. Fantastic. Looking a little bit sort of uh, sorry for itself is this W123 series Mercedes Benz. I'm guessing this is probably early 1980s. This particular example, real quality car. But clearly, this one had fallen out of love with its owner, by all accounts. Looking at that, it looks very, very sad. Now, here's a bit of a special car indeed. This is a Pegaso V8, bodied by Touring. This particular wonderful car, this little sports car, dates to 1953. And this is the only example of one of these I have ever seen. And very, very swish it is too. Okay, somewhat more humble, back down to earth with a bang. We've got HFK 791. This was the replacement for R Anglia. This is the Ford Popular 103E. Very much a pre-war car in design and everything about it. But this actually dates to the 1950s and which it was produced right the way through that decade. Incredible, really. Now here's a Swish one indeed, XX 4644. There is actually a short video about this car elsewhere on the channel. This is a 1922. Aston Martin, one of the very, very first Aston Martins, and great car it is as well. Lovely, lovely car. Now here we have a mighty Plymouth Roadrunner. Mighty, mighty V8 engine under that bonnet there, or the hood rather. You certainly wouldn't want that one appearing in your rear view mirror if you were driving along in an Austin 7. Um, yeah, what a, what a bonkers looking car that is. It sounds phenomenal whenever it turns up at the local car show. Now here's an unusual one, I had to do a bit of research on this one. This was down at Prescott a few years ago. This is a, a Bath, a Bath Fiat 1300 Scorpione. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Yeah, a Bath Fiat 1300 Coupe, the Scorpione. Pretty bonkers looking car, looks a bit like a Saab Sonnet. Okay, back to minis again now. We've got a W registered Mini 1275 GT. Down to Silverstone again, and in the pit area, we have a, there's a whole gaggle of classic race cars there. But in the foreground, of course, we've got a Texaco sponsored Ford Sierra Cosworth, probably one of the RS500 cars. Uh, just have a bit of prep work, but yeah, clearly specced out for racing. You can see the full cage in there, and so on. What could be more different? This is a Triumph Mayflower, the sort of razor edge lines of the Triumph Mayflower. The Renown was the bigger car, which also had very similar styling, and it probably worked a little bit better on the larger car, if I'm honest. But yeah, these Mayflowers are very idiosyncratic little cars. You don't see them all that often. Back to Alton Park, and this is on the skid pan area, and a newer car than most of the cars that are in this video, but that is a black Mazda MX-5, or rather the Unos, which was the privately imported car um, from Japan. The, uh, Market cars are Unos's, the UK market are MX-5. Okay, GFK 152, that's an Austin A40 Somerset of the early 1950s. Running gear, of course, based on the previous Devon, very, very similar indeed, albeit with column changes as opposed to the floor change on the earlier car, but otherwise very similar under the skin, but very, very different bodywork. The good old Rover here, the three-litre Rover P5. This one on an E-plate dates to 1967. Very, very smart car indeed. Of course, they later dropped the V8, the Buick designed V8 engine in these. It became the P5B. And this is the saloon version. There was also the coupe. Now here's a bit of an oddball American car. You don't see all that often here in the UK. The Chevrolet Corvair. I mean, Chevrolet were more used to building big front end, the engined V8, wafty saloons, sedans, coupes and so on, but this was a real departure with an air-cooled engine in the back. Now this one popped up at a local pub meeting last year, 2022, a glorious Austin A95 Westminster DSO 456. That was just a lovely car. I just kept going back to that one. It was just that nice a car. It just looked an absolute treat. Really, really nice. 
Back down to Bista, this was at the uh, Bista Flywheel event in 2018. We've got an ACA Seeker. Very smart, it is too, basically the fixed head coupe version of the AC Ace. Really, really smart car. Bit of a Ferrari look around the front end, I think, going on there. A very classy car indeed. And back to Austin's and BMC of the 1950s and a very forlorn looking A40 or A50 Cambridge. I think this one and the cars alongside it and around it have been robbed of their registration and was bought purely to take the plates off and then the cars were just dumped around the back, which was a bit of a shame because I'm assuming this one's not on the road anymore. To German cars now and this was at Landidno, the uh, big transport festival in 2023, one of quite a few Beetles, VW Beetles that were there. This is a, a lovely six volt car, really, really nice on those Porsche wheels, did look great in black, I must admit. Also in black, but a different venue. I think this was back to Vista again. I suspect BFH 766. That is an Austin 10 Cambridge, about 1937 or 38. Note the blackout mask on the headlight there and the white painted edges of the wings. The uh, running boards would often be done as well. That was so that the car could be driven during the blackout. Okay, here we are back to a motor museum here and we have a head on view of a standard Vanguard Phase 2 saloon. That's the uh, car that was built after the Beetleback Phase 1. Um, yeah, really sturdy, reliable cars. We could also get a diesel version as well. I think most were petrol. And from the similar stable, standard Triumph Fish, and we have this Triumph Roadster. Uh, late 40s or early 1950s, I imagine, is the date for this particular car. If you remember the Bergerac TV series, it's one of these that he drove around in John Nettles. Um, his was maroon, and this one is, of course, black. Now we're back to Bista, and we have, this was early 2023, and a Jaguar S-Type, very, very smart Jaguar S-Type from 1965. You can just see that little 100 EP uh, pickup truck in the back as well. Yeah, so two for the price of one with this particular photo, but that Jag looks really classy in those colours, I think. Now this is a rare one down at Bewley. If you may have seen the Bewley Museum video we did, this is the Crossley Burnie Streamline of 1934. If you're interested in this particular car, there are some lovely original Oldie Worldie photos on the old classic car image archive section. So uh, if you go, go over to the main OCC website, you'll see photos of one of those on there. Okay, MDN6, a black and very sharp looking Mercedes Benz 300 SL with Goldwing SL. What an incredible looking car that is as well. Just amazing car. To Woodford now, they regularly have uh, little transport gatherings over at the Avro Heritage Museum. In fact, we were at one only the other day. And here, on one of the previous occurrences of that particular meet, we've got a Morris Minor convertible. Really, really smart Moggy Thousand, uh, late 50s, about 1960, somewhere around about there. Now we're over to Kelsall's, the steam rally a few years back, 46 HTJ. Good to see the original registration number on this Hillman Minx. This car was put on the road in April of 1959. Doesn't that just look great? You don't see so many Roots Group cars around at shows, and I always think they're really, really nice. Okay, to Saab now, and this was their incredible Saab 99 Turbo. This is a three-door Combi Coupe version. Initially, in about 1977, they came out with the three doors and a few five door 99 turbos, and then they were replaced by the two door 99 turbos a little bit later. But this is one of the earlier hatchbacky versions. Okay, to Alton Park and their American car do that they have on there once a year, and this is a Pontiac Firebird on an F plate, so late 67 or early 1968 is the uh, build year for this particular car. Great looking cars, I do like those. to the local Combermere meeting, and you might recognise the truck alongside, but in the foreground, a fantastic 1964 Jaguar E-Type fixed head coupe in black. Very, very sharp looking car indeed. This one sounded great as it pulled in. Really, really nice car that is. Back to Bista, we've got VOD 873S. This is one of the upmarket versions of the Princess, the Leyland Princess. Complete with Triumph alloy wheels on this particular example. They offer Stag or one of the big Triumph 2000 saloons. Could be either, I'm not quite sure which, but yeah, quite a sharp looking car really. And from BMC now, in the early 1950s, we're at Tatton Park 2023 for this one. An Austin A30 saloon. Really, really smart little car showing off its 9, 4, no, rather 803 
forgive me, 803 cc eight series engine, which nestles under that bonnet. I'm also of Austin, but from the late 1930s, another example of Austin 10 Cambridge. This one's looking a little bit forlorn in someone's front garden. CWU 861. I wonder if it ever went on to be restored, this particular car. Quite a solid car, as I remember, but clearly the paint was probably past its best. PL8926. Now, this is a rarity. This is a 1931 AJS 9. Little 9 horsepower car, Richmond Saloon. You can see the fabric body covering on the main body there behind the bonnet. Rare, rare little car, that is. And very smart. Great to see that one. LDU 604, we're in the Jaguar Daimler Heritage Trust building now down at Gaydon. This is a drophead coupe version of the 3.5 litre Jaguar Mark V. And this particular classic car dates to 1951. Very, very smart looking motor car indeed, and very rare in that drophead coupe form. Really, really unusual. Back to American cars now, and we have the swoopy, low slung Buick Riviera this time. Okay, and following on from that mighty Buick, we have this lovely standard Vanguard Phase 1A saloon. The Beetleback Vanguard, of course, this is the Phase 1A with a slightly different grille compared to the very first Vanguards, but same engine, same running gear, very similar engine, in fact, to that in the grey Fergie tractor and the Triumph TR2. So, uh, yeah, that was a very dependable old unit, that was. Next up, we have a mighty Pontiac, the Monty Pontiac, Pontiac, Trans Am no less, a whole gaggle of American cars at this particular meeting, Alton Park, and that's where we saw this particular example finished in black with a gold car alongside it. Back to Carfest at Alton Park in 2013, we've got NUV 944 and Aston Martin DB2 stroke 4, lovely lovely car, really really, just an immaculate example of the DB24, and again finished in black. No hearses in this particular video, you'll be surprised to note. Okay, now we're over at Elvington at the Yorkshire Air Museum, CWU 874. That's a Ford EO4A Anglia. Very similar to that uh, barn find car that I featured very early in this particular video. But this is a lovely, lovely, shiny example of the breed. This is the forerunner to our Anglia. That's Tatton Park in 2023. We've got a Riley 468 or 472, I don't remember quite which one it is, but very similar car, just slightly different engines. But yeah, lovely Farina there with their mocked up mechanic working underneath this particular example. That's really, really cool stand that they had there at Tatton Park this year. Now to lovely MGs, MG5175. This is a pre-war MGTA. Still a few more black cars to come. Here, another classic Swede. We had the 99 Turbo before, and this was the development of the 99, the 900, with a longer front, very similar back end. This is a 16 valve turbo version of the Saab 900 on an H plate. This particular car, very sharp looking indeed. I do like those a lot. Back to the Motor Museum over in Portugal. And this rare, rare car, I had to include this one. This is a 1937 Chrysler. Imperial, what a bonkers looking car that is. Very low roof line, very distinctive grill on this particular car as well. Down to Prescott, uh, one of their events down there. Beautiful day it was as well. We have NXS 470 and Morris 20, 1934. This particular car, two and a half litre engine under that bonnet. You see plenty of the Morris 8s and the Morris 10s, but very few of these larger engine cars. And they just don't seem to have survived anything like as well. Okay, talking of large engine cars, we've got 439 UXW, a Ford Edsel Ranger, uh, dating to 1958. This was again at Crew Heritage Centre, one of their regular classic car meets that they hold there. And it's well worth getting along if you find the chance. There are several videos that we've done there. Back down to Malvern quite a few years ago, an NOK843, that's an Austin A70 Hereford. That's a Birmingham registration of May 1953, that particular car. So that's a contemporary of the summer set, and you can see the very similar styling, but the A70 was just a little bit bigger. Back to Portugal, we've got a rear three-quarter view now of a very solid, very original looking Peugeot 403. 
If I lived there, I would be very tempted. I would have made some inquiries, I think, as to whether this one was available, because it looked really, really solid. Great body on it, and the interior is nice as well. Yeah, nice, nice car. Back to Tatton Park. We do like Tatton Park, and a whole gaggle of Mark III Zodiacs here in the foreground, a black example. Really, really shiny, very impressive stand. They had Zodiacs and Zephyrs and estate cars as well as a saloon, so check out the Tatton Park video if you haven't yet seen it. It's well worth a look. And a lovely little Renault Dauphine now. This was kind of an evolution, I suppose, of our 4CV. Still stuck with the rear engine layout, slightly bigger than the 4CV. But yeah, that one looked really, really sound as well. Very solid black paintwork as well. Ready for a new life, hopefully. And there's a little Topolino alongside it. A very, very late Dolomite here. This is one of the SE models, one of the very, very late examples. Finished in black with the silver stripes down the side and Spitfire style wheels as well. You don't see too many good ones of those left now. This was at an evening meet uh, just a couple of years ago, I think. Another Vauxhall now. We've got a 1966 Vauxhall Cresta PB. You don't see too many of those. This one's got a white roof, but the main body's in black. Quite a comfy old bus they are, nice, and you don't see many of those, Rust has claimed most of those, and the Banger Race has probably got quite a few of the others. Now we're at Astor Park, this was in the late 2000s, a black example of the Wolseley 444 here, nice to see it's on its original registration number, SNA156, really really nicely turned out car, there's a little 100 e behind that as well. Still a few black cars to come in this particular collection. We're back to Crew Heritage and a rear three quarter view of a notchback Ford Mustang. Of course, that's on the D plate, so that dates the registration of that car to 1966. Up to 66, it was nice and easy to date the cars in the early 1960s because the dating ran from January through to December. Okay, KLO 449 now. That's a really lovely old Rover, Rover P3 Sports Saloon from 1949. That's a London issued registration number, sports saloon, slightly lower roof line and two windows per side as opposed to the regular saloon which had three windows per side. To an evening meet now organised by the Whitchurch Motor Club and we have a 1985 Porsche 944. We've had examples of 911 and it's the turn of the 944 now. This was down at Silverstone a few years ago. I think it was in like a bit of a display of auction entries. We have OAS373. Really smartly turned out a little Triumph TR, the TR2, or TR3 rather. Uh, really, really smart. Left hand drive, white wall tyres as well. Dating to 1967 now, we have this mighty Plymouth Fury. Again, this was at one of the evening meets organised by Whitchurch Motor Club. A very impressive looking car, this one. Certainly took up a few square footage. Just a couple more cars to go now in this particular collection. Back to Silverstone in the auction area. JGC 480. That is one of the flat rad so-called Morgans, the Morgan 44. And this particular car is from 1947. But yeah, very sharp looking car indeed. I do like that one a lot. AAH100. This is a Humber Snipe Pullman Limousine. Lovely pre war Humber. Um, this one it was registered in June of 1935. The little flashing indicators are an aftermarket fitment, but otherwise, it's a very original looking car. There's a little 100E behind as well. Next up, a Ford Zephyr 6, the Mark 1 version. There's a few extra accessories on this one including the sun visor and those little three portholes on the front wing there, that's more, those were fitted as standard to Buicks back around about the same sort of time. So those have been added afterwards, Ford never fitted those originally, but that's a really great looking car. And here's one I owned, this is my old Austin A40 Devon HWX801, this car dated to 1949 and I ran this one for quite a while, as I mentioned before this was the forerunner of the Austin A40 Somerset, same engine, different gearbox, but yeah probably drove very similar to the later car. HFM156, now this is an Lanchester LD10. There were two main versions you could buy of these, slightly different bodies. This is the Briggs bodied all steel car. Um, and yeah, that was a really, really, just a nice quality little car these are. They're very impressive with the pre-selected gearbox as well. Same as on the Daimlers. Okay, well that rounds out 
this collection of cars that were black, black painted classic cars. Thank you so much for watching this video, please have a look around the rest of the channel before you disappear, and there'll be many more videos along before too long, so bye for now.